cast down. The Lord has a word for us this morning, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to continue this series, Training Up Godly Children. Amen. The word that the Holy Ghost gave us, we started this last week. Today we're going to continue. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. I would let you all could have been fishing. You could have been asleep like some people. Went boating. Amen. But you're in the house of God. Hallelujah. To be edified, be with Jesus, and to worship and glorify Him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God <clears throat> as dear children. That's it. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. So we're talking about role models. Role models of following God. Let's pray. Father, have your way today, Father. You said, if any man speak, I let him speak as an oracle of God. I pray for the yoke breaking anointing to go forth and to minister and to have your way, Father. And you can use this word to edify and build up every hearer in this house of God and abroad. I pray that your will be done today, Father. You would magnify Christ as the word of God goes forth. And we all would be transformed from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord, I thank you that your word is going to run and have free course and accomplish that which you set it out to, Father. And we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank you for that liberty today. We thank you for Christ. And we ask for your work to be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. So we're talking about role models. Amen. Training up godly children. <clears throat> the verse says, Be ye therefore followers of God and dear children. So this verse instructs us to be an imitator of God. Follow sometimes in the King James translation originally means follow, to come after, <clears throat> to come behind, to come right behind Christ. But follow here means to imitate, basically. So since one attempts, uh, so in, in imitating, you must endeavor and attempt to copy or resemble, <clears throat> right? If you're painting something and you want to uh, paint a portrait of someone, you're going to look at it, you're going to behold it, right? And you're going to try to make a, an exact copy. You're going to try to resemble it, right? You're going to attempt it. You're going to try to do it, right? If you're going to draw a horse, you're going to look at the horse. You're going to try to draw it exactly how, as the horse looks, right? You're not, you're not just going to be like, mm, mm. Just running your crayon everywhere, your pencil everywhere, will you? So if you're successful, you will make or produce <clears throat> a replica or a likeness. So we understand that this takes aiming at it. You must aim. If you don't aim, you won't get any results. So Christ's likeness is not accidental. We must imitate Christ in morals, in piety, in faith, in doctrine, <clears throat> In worshiping him, we must imitate Christ. You must be like Christ. That means you must try. You must attempt to it. <clears throat> if you're going to try to be like Christ and try to be the follower of God, then you must know what God is like. You must be in the word of God. You must study God. You must find out about God in order to follow him as a dear child of God. 
And it's sad today that so many people, they don't even aim at trying to be like Christ. They just drift along through life. I mean, their sails aren't set. They don't have their compass out. They're just drifting along on the ways of life, hoping that they're going to land upon heavenly shore one day without even setting their sails set to aim, without even having Christ as their captain on board. So you must try to be like Christ. Right. Or else you will, your ship will sink. You will not end on heaven's shore. I mean, you must aim at having a sinless life. You must actually aim at it. Right. And try daily to live without sin. You must try to be patient. You must try and aim to hold your tongue the way Christ did. You have to aim. You have to take a target and try to deny yourself as Jesus Christ denied himself. You must try to do it. Turn to John chapter 1. Amen. So to aim to be like Christ, we must aim to be like Christ in every area. Be an imitator of God. Every area of your life, you must be an imitator of God. If you are a child of God, you must aim to be like Christ in your appearance in modesty, in, in your behavior, in your conduct, private, publicly, with men, with women, with your employer, with your employees. Everything you do, you must be Christ-like. It's good sometimes, amen, to be joke with your, if you're working with someone, uh, to joke, and to uh, maybe do some type of... Uh, have fun, you know, not foolishness, but have some fun and, and to do things. You know, but you have to be Christ-like. You know, some places I used to work, people used to do pranks, and people used to do all this stuff, and and do all this foolishness that, that wasn't, wasn't Christ-like. And sometimes it, the, the employer gets, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, distracted, or maybe he's not serving Christ, and he, and he doesn't show the respect that Christ would show to an employee. He doesn't serve, <clears throat> I mean, he doesn't communicate the way, the way uh, he would communicate with one of his peers or someone on his level that's not an employee. I mean, so we have to make sure in every single area we're aiming to be like Christ. Every area with every relationship, no matter what. Children, sisters, mothers, fathers, brothers, every single area in your life, you would be trying to be just like Jesus Christ. Just like him, a replica, exactly like him, as we as we can, of course, in the areas when we can. John chapter one, verse eighteen says, "No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him." So, nobody has seen God at any time. Nobody has seen or beheld or, or uh, <clears throat> you know, actually in the natural, seen God face to face. Except Christ. So Christ has declared him. Christ is showing him. Christ is unfolding him, the Father, to us. So since we've never seen God in the flesh, but God is saying, be the fathers of God as dear children, we're commanded to be like God. Matthew 5, 48 says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Therefore, diligent effort must be applied. An effort must be made <clears throat> sincerely. Because we cannot see Christ in the flesh with our senses. We can't see him with our eyes. But we learn through our senses. We learn through our experiences. We learn through what we touch taste, smell, hear, and see. And we are influenced by that those things that impress us or that affect our senses. Thus, by who we see and hear, company, family, friends, they have an influence upon us. And a lot of times people end up following their friends, their family, <clears throat> their company, their associates, Man upon the earth, mankind. <clears throat> Amen. But the world, the world contradicts the virtues that are in Christ. 
So you may be influenced to follow the world. You may be influenced uh, 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 many times, especially children particularly, <clears throat> are influenced. And, and adults, everyone. Even if you're not, and you don't have the word of God in your heart, and you don't have the spirit of God to teach you and to show you who you want to follow. Because human beings have a tendency to follow. We're like sheep. Uh, the, the word of God shows us this. Uh, the apostle Paul said, and ye became followers of us. Having received the word in much affliction and draw the Holy Ghost in 1 Thessalonians. And I believe also in 2 Thessalonians. So we be understand that men follow. Young people follow. Uh, and so we must be careful about our company, about our friends. Don't follow the world. Remember, follow Christ. Don't give it to the temptation to follow the world. Because what does the world say? The world's virtues and, the, and, and what the world chooses or puts out as excellencies or qualities or virtues contradict what the Word of God says. Amen. Let me give an example from the Word. <clears throat> a lot of times people want to worship and, and they praise a people, LeBron James, and, and, and the biggest actor, and, and the most famous celebrity, and the people with the most money. But a lot of times, most of the time, these people don't know God. They don't serve God. And a lot of, a lot of times, little children want to be <clears throat> like LeBron James or Michael Jordan or these, this person that's an adulterer, that's a whoremonger, that doesn't honor Christ, <clears throat> that doesn't serve God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Psalm 147.10 says, he delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. These are not the people you ought to follow. You are not to raise your children to try to be like some great basketball player. For what? You find if, if your child follows him, he's going to end up in hell because that's where he's going. Right. And Christ does Christ does not care about how fast this person can run. Nobody's going to stand up on Judgment Day and say, "Oh man, this guy was a great athlete." Well done, my good and faithful servant. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. 11. In Psalm 147. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. In them that hope in his mercy. Hallelujah. These are the types of things that we're going to teach our children. Hope in God. Hope in his mercy. Amen. So a lot of times, people, your, your, your friends, family, co-workers, you may be around in their company. They may try to influence you. They may not imitate Christ in, in that certain time, in that current moment. <clears throat> but, or you might hear things, you might be influenced by the world, or by so-called Christians that say they serve God, that say this from the Bible, and that try to teach things, and say, well, my dad teaches me to do this, and he's a Christian. Well, my mom teaches me to do this. And she's a Christian. Well, I raise my children this way. Well, I teach my children this. Well, I homeschool this way. Well, I teach my children about business this way. Well, this is the way I teach my children about money and about stocks and about uh, investments and about debt. Well, there's a lot of voices going on in the world and a lot of clanging symbols that we have to discern about. But we always have to remember to go back to, to the Word of God. Go back to the Bible to know how you have to follow God with his money, with his uh, teaching your children, with his uh, spending, disciplining, no matter what it ever it is. Continually go back to the Bible. Because right. uh, it, it is in the Word where we understand Christ's life, how we ought to follow. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Are you following me? Amen. 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 <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 15 says in verse 33 Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So the word of God tells us, if you have good manners, evil communication, companions, associates, company, will corrupt you, can change you. So you can say, unbiblical. 
communications corrupt biblical matters. You can say righteous. Be not deceived. Unrighteousness. So basically, you can be affected. We can be influenced. We are being influenced uh, some of the time. Mankind can be persuaded. Your children can be persuaded. And they are being persuaded. And not all your friends and family members and co-workers are Christians. They're not, they're not all saved. Some are. And those that are saved, they all don't serve Christ biblically. They all don't have a biblical doctrine. They all don't, you know, we all, you all, we all don't serve Christ the same. Everyone doesn't believe the same thing <clears throat> about the Bible. So, as you have to be around your family and friends and co-workers and employees and employers and <clears throat> people, watch their influence upon you and your children. You know, some may not consciously dissuade your imitating Christ, but some may intentionally try to stain or ruin or mar your replica, your copy. That you are producing, that you are man. They may try to throw mud on it while you're trying to copy Christ, and they may want to stain it up. They're trying to get you to stop, stop being like Christ. Amen. Right. Some may unconsciously do it. They, they, they may not know. They, they, they may just keep changing the subject every time you talk about the Bible. Every time you talk about prayer, they may just sigh and walk away or say some disparaging remark. It's by it's by just, just out of default. But some may actively calculate with a dark design, just like the dark master Satan to try to get you to snuff out your light. For, but remember, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A lot of times, your influence, your light shines upon their dark heart and their sin and their dirty sin and their corruption. And your light reminds them of their soon coming uh, pitch dark existence in hell with their dark master Satan. Amen. So you are the light. You expose them. So you're a biblical man. You are a light. You expose their gloominess and their doubt and their false religion and their hip 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 hypocrisy. Amen. So just watch how much they influence you. You know, think about it. Who, who, who are you most alike? Think about it. You know, this is, it's, it's not a question I want answered. But, but you know, people resemble people that they're like, so it would be good to see it. Now, he's just like Christ. He reminds me of Christ. Or somebody may say, he reminds me of his father. He's just like his father. And somebody may, oh, they may grudge, they may hate hearing that, depending on the father. Or somebody may say, She's just like her mother, and it may be a great blessing and a great compliment. Amen. Because the mother exudes Christ's likeness and holiness and kindness and love. Or you say, he's just so he's just like so-and-so. So think about it. who are you just like? Or who do you want to be most like? Do you want to be more like Christ? Do you want to be just like Christ? Or do you want to be like someone else? So remember, so you have to. You know, and 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 just go to the Bible. The Bible tells you how much you want to fellowship with such and such, how much you want to be around so and so. If if these people are affecting you or or influencing you or your children, it may come out from among them. Right. You don't have to spend every day of the week in them for them to affect you. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three says, "Be not deceived." I mean, sorry. First Corinthians five six says, "Your glory is not good." No, you're not. A little leaven, leaven it the whole lump. Right. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew 10, 37 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 38, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me <clears throat> is not worthy of me. So sometimes it takes self-crucifixion, crucifying your flesh, crucifying your feelings, crucifying your emotions, crucifying your own uh, natural thinking, circumstantial thinking. Deny yourself what you think, what you've been taught, amen, and being willing to offend people, being willing to speak, being willing to speak up, being willing to do, being willing to shine, amen, turning on your light, lighting your candle in public, no matter who's around, to glorify Christ, your Father, which is in heaven. 
So we understand that everything, you know, children there, you know, they're, they're being affected if you have children. And you want to rain and train up godly children. So if you're around these people, you're around somebody, you don't have to entertain their profanity. I mean, if you're working yeah. somewhere and, it, and it's lunch or in a break room, you don't have to entertain their boasting of their sin and their sex campaigns on the weekends or their foolishness or this ungodliness going on in a break room. You don't have to entertain that. Amen. You're somewhere with, with your children. No, no. If people are using profanity and cussing like sailors and, and, and football coaches, you know, you... you, you <laughs> You put, excuse me, can you please be considerate of my children? You know, we serve God, we serve God. That's okay. That's biblical. Right. Speak up. Amen. That's how you're going to help people, by speaking up. You don't have to fear and freeze up and be overly concerned about offending Hey man, just keep walking, man. Keep talking like Christ. Keep believing like Christ. Keep preaching like Christ. Keep praying like Christ. Keep witnessing like Christ. Keep following and imitating Christ every moment of the day, everywhere. Hallelujah. Your platform will increase to be used of God. Amen. We should be so faithful and holy. Amen. And, and, and being, being willing to. Ruin your own reputation, your own image, your own copy, amen, and replace it with Christ, regardless of what anybody says. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Matthew 5, 16, says, I quoted, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So, we are shining our light for our children to see also. Not just the world, not just sinners, amen, but our children. And children are impressionable. You all say, mm. you know, they're humble, they're trusting, and this is biblical, they're, they're trusting as opposed to proud and heady. Uh, you know, there are a few young children that are know-it-alls. You know, they're willing to trust, they're willing to hear, they're willing to listen because they don't know. And uh, they're innocent and uh, they're treated differently because we know that they're innocent and they're young and they're delicate. So we treat them in that manner in raising them up. So, so they become trusting. Because I want to say most people, uh, I'm going to in hope say most people love on children and treat them delicately and don't harm them. Right. And so <clears throat> they respond, and that's why they're humble. That's why they're lowly. They, they're, not, they're not sitting there chest out, acting proud and prideful. They have a low, lowly heart and a lowly mind. Turn to Matthew chapter 18. So as we're talking about training up godly children. There. So Matthew 18. I'll start at verse 1. Three. I'll start at verse one. Amen. Hallelujah. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, verily, verse 3, very last thing, as he be converted and become as little children. So, how do you become as little children? Well, verse 1 gives us the context, starting at verse 1. They came on him saying, who is the greatest? So the context is they talk about who, who is the greatest. How do we become great? What shows a person that they're great? And Jesus called the little child and him in the midst of them. Verse 3. Verse 3 said, Except ye be converted. They need to turn. They need to change their mind. And not be concerned about being great. And not want to be great. But become lowly. Become submissive. 
become humble, willing to be the least of these. So when he says, you, except you be converted and become as a little child, the conversion is a conversion from being concerned about being great and being lowly. Because the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive such a little child in my name, receiveth me. So children, they're watching. They're listening. They're, they're observing. So we're trying to train up godly children, right? And you want to be an imitator of Christ. So they're watching you. They're watching your imitation. They are uh, <clears throat> listening. Amen. They're, they're paying attention. Whether you apologize, right? Right. Whether you're holy right. in public and in private. Whether you're forgiving. Mm -hmm. Or you're just bitter and you just won't let go. And you just keep gossiping. And you just kind of keep being negative. And you just keep going to keep berating. Uh, keep, keep running somebody's name through the mud. Keep being negative. They're saying whether you're honest. Mm -hmm. They're watching your imitation as you try to follow God. Whether you enjoy the word of God, whether you read it, or whether you just dust it off every time you go to church, or whether you have to look for your Bible for 20 minutes when the minister or somebody is coming over, or whether you just put your Bible up on a mantle, they're watching. Right? Isn't that phrase they say, like father, like son? So... <clears throat> In training up our children and, and following God and trying to make this imitation, we have to remember and keep in mind that training and teaching is by practice more than precept, by what you actually do, how you actually behave. That is a large part of training up your child in how you behave, in how you conduct yourself, in how you live. I mean, not just words. Luke, Luke 6.40, Jesus said, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So as we're trying to perfect the imitation of Christ and God, we're going to try to be like him. So let's be careful not to be one of these parents like many are, and that say, do as I say, not as I do, which we call them a hypocrite. No, no, you should be able to say, do as I say, and do as I do. Amen. Actions speak louder than words. And since your walk is more telling than your talk, and conduct is more convincing than your convo. And let's keep this in mind. And, and, and remember that in this body is how we teach. And we teach with our words and also with this body that we're living in. And also, at the same time, fail not to speak about Christ. Fail not to expound and rehearse the excellencies of Christ. Amen. Tell them about it. Talk to them about it. Read the Bible with them. Explain the Bible. Pick up the word of God, men. Men of men, mothers, fathers, women, grandparents. Amen. Pick up the Bible and read it to your children. Keep it, man. We, we live in a sad day with so many parents, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, grandparents. Don't know the word of God. And they don't know God. So we gotta, we gotta tell them the Bible. We have to teach them the Bible. In right. practice and in precept. Hallelujah. Ephesians. Now we can turn back over to Ephesians. Ephesians 5 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given us himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God. For a sweet smelling savior. So, countesses be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And <clears throat> walk in love. John said, St. John and 1 John said, Let us not love in word only, but also in deed and in truth. This just says, Walk in love as Christ all that has, hath loved us. So, talk about Christ. Uh, have just, just talked about Christ at, at, at the dinner table. And when you're rising up, when you're lying down, speak to your children about Christ. And you can speak to them about games and horses and animals yeah, or a movie uh, that they might have seen or uh, something that they're talking to you about, something that interests them, something in school. But you have to talk to them about Christ. 
Try to relate it to Christ if possible. <clears throat> but mainly what I'm saying, just make sure you're talking to your child about Christ Jesus. Amen. Talk about his love. He said he loved us and has given for himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Christ loved us. Remind them that Christ loved them. Keep on reminding them. Keep on telling them that Christ died. Christ died for you. Christ died for me. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for your sin. Isaiah 53 says, He despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and a queen with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was buried, he was bruised for our iniquities. <clears throat> the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes he were healed. And Christ died for us. He gave himself for you. There's no greater love than that. That Jesus Christ died for you, shedding his blood on the cross for your sin. Hallelujah. Talk about his love. Talk about his great qualities. Amen. That excel and that exude holiness. Think about his great purity. Think about his long suffering for you. How he knows you year after year after year. And your heart that was like Reddit. And you, he, he, he was patient. And he didn't drag you into hell where you belong. Talk about his eternal forgiveness. And then he's forgiven you for your sex, and for your fornication and lust, and for your drugs, and for your murder, and for your lying, and for blaspheming his name, and for stealing from your neighbor, and being a thief, and being so ungodly, and denying him, and following the Satan. He forgave you for eternity. Talk about his strength. Talk to children about his strength, moral strength, his courage, amen. his he set his face like a flint to go to the cross. That's for our courage. Not going in a boxing match with Mike Tyson or whoever. Not wrestling a, a gorilla. Not being willing to fight and be tough. And be the toughest boy in the park. Or be the toughest man on the block. And man, talk about Christ courage. Moral courage. Amen. Spiritual courage. Faith. Amen. Oh, just keep reminding your children. So much to talk about. Talk right now about Christ. His trustworthiness. His dependability. Amen. His mercy. His grace. All these things. Hallelujah. And also, we continue in Ephesians 5. <laughs> verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You are either a child of God or a child of the devil. You are either your, either your father and mother or you either dishonor your father and mother. You either train your children in the way that they should go or you're training up your children in the way that they should not go. Right. You're either a child of obedience or a child of disobedience. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. Raise your child to be a child of light. Raise your child to be a child of obedience. Raise your child to be a child of salt. Different from the world. Separate from the world. Chosen out the, from among the world. I mean, this world doesn't know how to teach children. Look what they teach their children in this public school. Text me. There's no gender, they'll say. Boys are not boys. Boys can be girls, and girls can be boys. They just have to think it and imagine it, and they just have to say it. <clears throat> don't follow the world's ways. They are contrary. Don't let the public schools teach their children. You must teach them. <clears throat> don't let Disney teach them. 
You have to teach them. You have to raise them, raise them up. You have to. You must. Or the world society is going to. The world says, it's okay to be a sodomite. God says, it's, it's not okay. God says, it's an abomination. And no matter what the world says, they all will find out one day. As soon as that body dies or Christ returns and judgment is set, then they will see that, oh, it definitely wasn't okay. It was, an abom- it was a sin. It was an abomination. And then they'll pay for it. Don't just sit your child in front of the television for four hours a day watching anything, watching Disney, watching all these things. I mean, so, so you can do this, so you can go do this, so you can have your fun, so you can be by yourself. And you let the television in Hollywood train up your child to be ungodly and to lead them into hell. You don't train your child to be like Will Smith, who will go, who's such so weak if it's even real, if it wasn't even staged. Most of Hollywood television is false and staged. But even if it was real, okay, this actor, famous actor, goes on. He does an award show, and man tells a joke, and he gets up, storms on stage, and slaps him like he's some tough guy. No, don't train your child. Don't, don't teach them. Don't, don't. These are not role models. Amen. These are not the people that God wants us to emulate or to imitate or to set before our children. They are not. That is not courage. That is not manhood. That is not godly. A godly man, Christ wouldn't do that. Christ had self-control. Christ is not slapping people out of emotions. He's not just slapping people out of, out of trying to be tough. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 3.17. Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> 17 says, Brethren, the Apostle Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me and <clears throat> mark them <clears throat> which walk so as ye have us for an example. So the Bible says, Mark them. That means that take heed, look at them. Note them as a sign of distinction. Make a visible and mental impression what not to be like. Name names, amen. Point out particular behaviors and sins. That's what the Bible says, uh, that's what the Bible does in Ephesians chapter 3. It names of sins, but fornication, all uncleanness, or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you, nor filthiness, nor foolish talking, jesting. That no unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And the, and the apostle Paul said, mark them. So name the behaviors. Name the sin. Tell them. And of course you got to be out of sin yourself. You have to be holy. You have to be loving God yourself. If you're going to try to teach the children to stay from the sin, that's going to destroy their souls. Right. Amen. Name them. Amen. Name names. Mark them. Hallelujah. That's what he said. He said, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so. Mark them. You have to mark them. You have to make them a target. They have to be seen. They have to be known. They have to be understood. He said, yes. Now, 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 uh, Peter, see what just happened here? Don't do that. You don't want to lose your temper and lose and become wrathful. He said he threw that glass and broke it. You don't want to do that. That's wrath. That's anger. He's letting his passion control him. So that's what we don't want to do. So we say, Peter, can you imagine Christ doing that? Teach them. Tell them. Now, of course, I don't believe there's no a queer James Bible. That's an abomination, a blasphemy. We understand that God is in a masculine form. Of the Father, Jesus Christ was a. He took on a male body, so we know that God is uh, in the masculine form. Always in the Bible, it never says sheep. But 
to make a point, you can say, well, imagine, imagine if Christ was born. Like, let's say the Messiah. Just think about it. We don't have to because it all applies to him because it's all scripture. But think about it. Would Christ be on Facebook and on Instagram, posing and doing all these things, perking up their lips, pushing up their uh, members, and doing these things and posing with all this makeup on, trying to go all sensual and sexual? What if Christ would, would Christ do that? No, when well, you tell them, you, you, you see this, this exudes that they wish to be lusted after. This exudes sensuality, fleshliness, carnality, and most of it leads to sin. This is not godly. Don't do that, right? Christ's not out with a tank up on flexing his muscles, right? He's not jogging. Christ would be jogging down Jerusalem, jogging down Bethlehem Main Street with a, uh, no shirt on him. You have to tell them that. That's ungodly. The Bible says you want to cover yourself. These are, these are the things you have to do. You have to... This is how you teach. This, this is how you train. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 4. We'll be coming to a close. How many enjoy what the word what the Holy Ghost has to speak to us? Amen. Amen. He's helping us. Amen. He wants us to reign, train a, a generation of children. Amen. That is an army for God. Soldiers. Amen. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, te teachers, consecrated elders. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 says, verse 15, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. 16, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. So he's talking about fathers, children, being a follower, verse 17, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son. Who is my beloved son? Let me get back to Ephesians. Ephesians 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. That word dear means beloved. As be therefore followers of God as beloved sons and daughters, as dear children. That means Christ loves you. Timotheus, 1 Corinthians 4 17, but this course have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who's my beloved son, and a faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So Timothy was like Paul. Paul was like Christ.